So I put the new AirTex fuel pump in this about two years ago. I did a video on it, September 2011. It starts up and it runs out of gas. You can hear the fuel pump sounds terrible. And it's only like 5 PSI. I did a fuel pressure test on it. So I replaced the fuel filter just to be thorough. We like to diagnose things around here. And you know, that's a maintenance item. You're supposed to do that every two years anyway. And Shirley Temple, it's the fuel pump. So I told myself, self, next time you get a chance, you should do a fuel pump doing a tilt bed method. I thought, tilt bed method, that sounds exciting. So that's what we're doing today. Um, you can see, same color even. So what we're going to do is we're going to undo uh, the filler neck. It looks like a radiator hose going from here to the fuel pump. And we're going to undo the tail lights at the very back. And this is all detailed out in that other video. Um, I'll put a link to that right here along the bottom. And click on that if you want to see more details of it. But basically what we're going to do is we're going to try leaving the bolts in on the passenger side, removing all the driver's side bolts, and then we're going to jack just that end of the bed up to be able to get to the pump. Should be fun. I don't know if you knew, but the bolts are an 18 millimeter and they go up from the bottom. So we'll climb down in there and take a dirt bath, a dirt shower, get them out. One of them back here is in the frame. So you gotta kind of hunt for it to be able to find it. This makes for a smooth bed, but a little bit tricky with this. Ah, oh, the dirt, it's everywhere. Meh. There's four per side on this last one. I definitely don't want the under there. And it's on this uh, driver's side where all the plugs are for the lights. bolts in so that when you tilt the bed up, now I say I'm leaving the bolts in as I'm pulling bolts out, I'm talking about the passenger side. The reason why is when we lift this up and jack it up, we do not want uh, the bed to slide off that way because the corners here, you can see, you could have some damage because you've got this surface here that's in close proximity to this and you don't want that to slide and get damaged. So. I'll show you the lights. I wasn't going to, but what the hey. Alright, you ready? Do a little acrobatics going underneath it here. So all the lights just plug into this little board here. You just push in with the tab and they just pull right off. I just go nuts on them. I just do all of them and then uh, put them back when I get back. So bada bang there's all the lights that bolt I was telling you about is hard to get to is down here or up here you got access through that little so I have the tailgate removed and I've got the bolts on the passenger side out you know the total length of the bolts not much it's only about this long so I have them backed out to about there and uh, I'm gonna tip it up and see if I can get this 2x4 to go between the frame and the bed or the wheel well and tire for now. So the gun, I think that's going to give us the room that we need. Let's go look around and see what it looks like here. Looks pretty crazy. This is the part I was concerned about. And we're not touching, just barely, but not touching. Between the cab, I've got air gap all the way. So it looks like we're okay. Pretty cool. There's your fuel pump. So, see if we can get into that. Boy, this is a whole lot easier than pulling the whole bed not as fun, it's not as dramatic by any means, but not bad. 
and get that thing to come out. There's the wiring. So let's see if I can just set this up in there. And that way I can work with a couple of hands. Everybody knows many hands make light work. Let's see what we can do. About have to get yourself all the way up into this thing. Huh. Doggone, you really gotta be up in there to work on this thing. I don't like that. Makes me nervous. I'm gonna put a jack stand up in there, on there. Just in case. I don't know who Justin is or much anything about the Case family, but people sure talk about that guy a lot. Alright. Well, it looks like you can put a jack stand right on top of the axle and put it up to the strong member of the frame of the box. That'll hold. I'm gonna have to be sitting on the ground with my head up inside of this humajuma. Alright, here. I think some pliers or something would be in order. Right down. Yeah, it's squirting everywhere anyway. Why not? So much for zero PSI, huh? There's lots of air. There's a lot of air back pressure, it seems. Get a drain pan under that here. On there. You gotta add on there to everything you say. You gotta take that fuel line off on there. I've known a couple of guys that were like that. Everything they said they prefaced and or not preface, post, what do you say at the end with the phrase on there. It's like you guys did a good job over there on there. We'll have you back again sometime. You know, that sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not sure how crazy I am about this or not, but sure worth a try. You know, I'll try anything once, you know, in terms of repair. A lot of things I won't try. I've never tried smoking, for example. Do you need to get pliers on that or what? That's the way to do that. Much better. Just don't crush it. Be gentle, you know. Alright, so we'll stuff those off to the side and get some compressed air in there and blow all the dirt and dust out. Ain't that something? Right there. Alright, so here comes the part we all know and love. Hammer time. What I've been doing, you haven't seen as I've been off camera, is I've been crawling in and just kind of wearing this pickup truck like a shirt. You got this little guy here, you gotta pry out and get it to stand up. Once you've done that, then you can bang on this thing all kinds of fun ways. I just put in an AirTex fuel pump two years ago, so it should come out pretty good. I got all excited about those AirTex fuel pumps because Eric, the car guy, did a review on it going to the factory. It's like a made in America. Heck yeah, all right, let's do that. AirTex, woo! But apparently, they're not what they were cracked up to be because upon putting seven or eight of those in different vehicles, I've had about every single one of them come back. That sucks. All right, so here's the difficulty. We're gonna have to have this compressed. 
it is spring loaded but you're gonna have to do that in order to get it out or go higher yeah I can see this being a little bit of a hang up here Let's see if I grab hold of it under the sending unit because these springs push with some authority all right we're spilling everywhere get that drain pan under there it's nice to pull it straight up because then you can save all that gas for the weeds in between the cracks here, sidewalk and all. Whew. Can you do it? Yes, you can. I just did. I showed you how. So anyway, yeah, if you don't have a jack to lift and lower that tank with, you don't have two guys to do the bed, this is the way to go. So let that be a lesson to you. Hope you enjoyed the vehicle, the video and uh, click on this fuel pump to subscribe um, hurry up now I'm going to change it alright now go ahead and click on this to see the other video about how to do it with taking the bed off thanks for watching click like and be sure to comment we're going to do a little commercial for Airtex here and just show everybody at home this thing hasn't even turned color and it's just shot and like I say this is probably the seventh or eighth in a row that I've done where you know I put it in and have to take it right back out they used to be an awesome company you know I was using nothing but air for a little while there and then it just seems like the last eight or nine just went to pot somebody online said to comment about them that they weren't doing so hot and uh, I was like well they've been great for me I don't know what you're talking about trying to show some love and support for an American made company where does this one say yes is made in the USA that breaks my heart I really hate that so you can see that black o-ring that comes with the pump that's put in there first it looks all wet because it is it's covered in slip coat which is a slip silicone and so now when I slip the new fuel pump in there it's going to go right in without any evap pinches problems leaks etc so we do that first and then we take our new uh, precision brand fuel pump which is the next brand that I'm doing I'm doing these in Carter's right now um, as far as uh, what I'm going with since I don't use AirTex anymore it made, made a monkey out of me you know it just sucks having to call people and say yeah it is your fuel pump didn't you just do that yes I did I'm sorry but they won't warranty it and they're junk so you know shame on them for putting the shame on me yeah, dropping the tank gives you a lot more access and you can be gentle and do a better job. Like I say, if you don't have that kind of equipment, I would definitely go this route. Check my float, make sure that it's okay after all of that. Yeah, we're good. I max this out pretty close. I could probably go a little bit higher. I don't know. Maybe we should try that while I'm in here. Make sure this is secured so I don't drop it on it. Alright, that'll get down good. Throw our little ring on there. Still can't believe it's a fuel pump that's bad already. That just drives me crazy. Don't like that at all. Okay. Have to reposition my arm. I don't like the way I'm wearing this pickup truck at the moment. And manufacturing in America, it's a tough racket. You got the EPA, you got the labor unions, you got all these different people that are trying to shut you down. You're competing with people that are paying labor wages that are just a crime against humanity. Boy, I wish I could stand on this and lean on it. I can't. What a pain in the arse. Man, everything you do, you just really gotta wear it. Or the same grim and bear it. Well, close, but it's grin and wear it here. Let's scoot the base of that down a little. Just didn't feel like I was in there quite all the way. That's better. I 
like that. Come here, truck. Let me see how you fit. If I get too low on the handle, then the bed's in the way of the hammer. Unless you go with the shorter one. But we're there, dude. I forgot to take off all the tabs off the old one. I don't know why they don't just give you new ones. You buy a $5 fuel filter, they give you new tabs. You buy a two, $300 fuel pump and you got to pry them off the old one. Never understood that. It's unfortunate. Grab some of that slip coat on my gloves and hit those lines with it. Click, 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 boom. Well, I bet this bed goes on a lot faster than it even came off, and that was pretty quick. Maybe I'll change my ways and go this route. Okay. Ran out of gas, kicked right back in. I think we got ourselves a fix. All right, so I'm gonna go back in here and tighten this clamp back on. Like I said, this was so rusty. If you got an evap problem, I'd check that. I'm gonna have to squirt some silicone into there just for insurance because that's ugly. It's just a little uh, body tab here and then a couple of torque screws there. I think it's a size 30, T30. Is that a T? I said T. And Mr. T. Pity the fool. Alright. Where is it? There it is. A little silicone welding here. Try to get a screwdriver up in there to pry it loose because it's so stuck because of the rust. Went right through the rust. All right, that's good. Let's see what I'm working with here. Come on, show them what you're working with. So I'm using my legs mostly. I'm just kind of er, er, pushing with my feet. Boy, that goes well. This might just be the way to do these things. I'd like to get a little more height to clear that out clean because I do not care for being in that tight space wearing the pickup truck like a shirt but I do like the time saved and the lack of having to have all the special tools yeah I got them now but there have been years where I did this on the side of the road sometimes and it just wasn't any fun dropping that tank or pulling the bed Bless them for using the metric system. I'm so proud. Get underneath of there with a little ratchet wrench. This is the strap I'm talking about, of course. I have everything grounded so I don't have any static electricity issue. And to make sure that you got good grounds where you need them. But the lights are all on a separate thing anyway. Separate little harness. I'm not laying in any gasoline. Might be. Stuff burns even when it's not on fire. Fire. I say fire correctly. I gotta work on that. Alright, here we go. Switch that and go crazy. Hey look, one hand behind my back. Blame it on my ADD, baby. I 
think I'm done. It looks like I'm done. Nope, got to put in some bolts. I'll make sure that the bed's on right. I got a big gap on each side that's about the same. The bed looks pretty straight. Body line's a little bit off right here. ever so slightly. Let's look at this, huh? Seems like something fun to do. We're not doing anything else at the moment. That looks good. I like it. Well, I'm going to stick some bolts up in there and throw a tailgate on and uh, rock and roll. Coochie coo. Hey, let's put on a tailgate. What do you say? So I grabbed a tailgate by each end. Left end. Goes in like a tube hole, whatever. You gotta do it first, and if you got a plastic line bumper, that makes it nice. Don't worry about scratching paint. Lean way back. Squish up against the KTM toolbox. Like that. And then, click those in on each side. Let's review what we did. We uh, put the filler neck back on. That's all you get. That's it. So put the filler neck back on. We did two screws. We did the body tab here. We did the 10 millimeter bolt for the ground strap. We did four bolts all the way in along here. We tightened four bolts along that side and we plugged in four electrical plugs on this side for the lights uh, around the bumper. And uh, Gonna put the gas cap back on. Oh wait, we did that. Bam! We got a truck. Let's go pull a boat. Yeah.